Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ingus and I'm from IGS Electronics and today we're going to check out another drive that we haven't done for a while so uh, I thought today might as well jump on another drive that we have here in stock and that is manufactured by ABB and it's ABB's ACS55 drive. This drive is interesting, uh, I'm not sure for what market is being targeted to but uh, it only has two wire control. That's all it has, and it's it's I mean it's dead easy to set up and get yourself going, things like that. But that's all you can do. So uh and unless you're willing to uh, spend money, which is could be all about all depending who you're buying it from, uh, up to about three to four hundred pounds uh here in UK, it's uh, called Drive Kit, which will allow you to connect your drive to the laptop and download the software called uh, Com uh, Drive Config. 1.2 or something like that, which is free from ABB, and then you can figure and get more out of it. And when it, go, when it comes down to IOs and things like that, but a lot of people, especially for the master market, ain't gonna do that. So, uh, and I was always researching around as well, and have a look around at how much is uh, uh, the actual uh, drive kit itself. There's not that many people actually selling it, so uh, yeah, so it's not very widely used, and it's very limited to only two eye control. For my research, what I've done, again, I'm not sure what kind of research they've done it and, and, and what I've so far been doing, and most people that actually like three-wire control, and that option is not for this drive. So you are, if you're looking for three-wire control, which is a start and stop, that option is not going to be available for this drive. It's only two-wire control, and that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be checking out how to set up the drive, get the drive going, and wire in our two-wire control, and test on it and see how it works. So that's what we've been doing today. So without further ado, oh! And all the related manuals and everything else, believe the free bus away, is going to be in the description below. So now, let's get started. There we are. So uh, as usual, let's go through the wiring. As you can see, I already wired in the, my control station. You can buy pot like that. There we go, so something like so, uh, that you plug onto here and it will give you a potentiometer, uh, it's probably looking like that, uh, to plug onto it and uh, it's going to give you a run, a run and a uh, forward reverse and potentiometer onto it. I don't, I'm not going to use that because uh, I want to use jog and I'm going to use external station, but you can't do that, it's about roughly about 20, 20 something pounds here in UK, not sure where you, uh, how much is different in your place. So, uh, so yeah, uh, the, power, the motor uh, output is right in the bottom, the T1, T2, T3, or UVW. Uh, power here it comes in in the, in the top as L for line and N for neutral, and obviously the V is going to be standing for your earth. Uh, these dip switches, let's go through the dip switches uh, now, so we can sort of more or less uh, talk them through what they uh, do. So first the dip switch is a 50, 60, it's depending, uh, that's your nominal frequency, which is... Um, uh, which country you are in, because usually around the world there's 50 or 60, make sure that's your uh, base frequency. So the next one is a, uh, the second dip switch is, is, is a motor noise level, it's called this thing called uh, switching frequency. So you can, uh, f uh, off is going to be working on four uh, switching frequency, which, the, uh, which is uh, in some ways good for the motor, but uh, it will create a lot more noise, I'm not going to get into switching frequency, uh, at the moment and it stands at switching frequency here stands at 4 and on silent it will stand on 16 which means the switches inside that creates the sine wave it's going to work a lot lot a lot lot faster so uh, and it could affect the heat of your drive depending on what sort of load you're using for the testing purposes we want it quiet we keep that on silent so uh, uh, then uh, load a torque type uh, obviously it wanted um, off this one down here pf is going to be on a fan and motor which is uh, pf stands for and if it's not fan, uh, fan and motor is belts and things like that you want to put it on a ct which is a constant torque so after that is a jog uh, jog in here this one here it says between 4 5 and 10 hertz self-explanatory how fast you want your jog you get two options for it 
Then there's relay output, you can configure relay output in here, which you want this guy in here. This is your relay output in here. What you want it to be is if you want to be as default or motor running. So it's entirely up to you. And after that is a minimum value for analog input. So you can uh, change, I don't think you would use it because you have this, where it's switch, this switch in here between current and volts. So uh, if you are using current, then you're going to be an I. If you're using volts, you're going to be an V. So uh, an offset, off stands for standard zero uh, to a, um, a zero to a 20 milliamps or a zero to 10 volts or on is going to be a 4 milliamps to a 20 milliamps or it's going to be 2 volts to 10 volts we're going to be on 2 volts and 10 volts so and then after that we've got a automatic fault reset uh, on function a uh, uh, which is uh seventh which is this guy in here this is at the moment standing uh, we don't not going to use that so we're going to use it's automatically it will reset on uh uh, on and off, which will be off, will be no auto reset, and on will be auto reset enabled. Will reset himself uh, himself once the fault is removed. And after that, that eighth one is a high frequency mode, which is the off is for standard and on is for high frequency enabled. Not really sure what this is for, so uh, uh, I'm not so uh, understanding what that really is for. So I'm not going to comment much on that one. We'll keep that on off. So after that, you have, uh, as you can see down there, this I already mentioned, that's going to be your relay uh, output, which you already know how to configure it. From there on, we have a two comms in here. This comm in here, which you're going to be, if you're using external power supply, you're going to be using this comm for it. After that, uh, to a power supply to run your IOs in here, which you're not going to do. Uh, then there's a comm, another comm, then there's a, a, a speed AI and 10 volts. That's for your potentiometer. And from there on, 12 volts is going to be internal drive supply, which is going to be turning on and off at the uh, IOs. The digital input one is start, then it's digital two for reverse, and digital input uh, uh, three is going to be for jog. And SCR is for your earthing of your ma mainly for your potentiometer cable, if it's required a shielding. So, and that's that's all there is. And when I say that's all there is, I'm actually lying because we forgot the most, most, most important part in here, which is three, the, uh, three of these uh, dials in here. First one is mo motor I nominal, which is, the, uh, which is the overloader for your motor. My motor at the moment is 0.18 kilowatt at one amp, and the drive is actually designed to be a 0.75 kilowatt and a 4.3 amps. So what I'm going to do, what I do, I take uh, the motor's uh, current dividing by drive current by 100 and that gives you sort of the percentage which you are just in here that's what it says percentage in here but as you can see down there my, that were made uh, uh, minimum uh, the drive is allowing is 50 percent to uh, drive current my one works out at 23 percent so that pretty much says that this drive is a little bit too big for this motor but for test purposes it will do just fine so you just adjust whatever the percentage you worked out so acceleration deacceleration self expansion accelerates and deaccelerates all the way up to 30 seconds. And again, this is this high frequency uh, thingy, which again, I can't seem to work out what it does. So uh, I'll leave it, uh, leave it be. So, uh, and as you can see down here, I have left the switch on off mode because I'm going to show you a, uh, how the uh, off mode when on, on your free, uh, carrier frequency, how the motor sounds like when it's on a low carrier frequency and how the motor, motor sounds, on, uh, sounds like when it is on a, uh, a high carrier frequency. So the station we're going to be using is going to look more or less like that. We're going to have an east of. We're going to have a. I named it like run forward. When you go, if I want to go in the reverse, I put them both on. So and then we're going to have a jog and also it's our potentiometer. Potentiometer can be from one to ten kilo ohms. Within that range, will be just fine. So uh, when it comes down to uh, the wiring. Uh, number one, which is the 12 volts from right here, coming to my e-stop in here, which is basic e-stop, it will remove the power from the inputs. So from there on, it comes through, and this guy in here doesn't go anywhere, it just uh, sits, uh, that's for different drives uh, I'm using that for. Then on, it goes on to, as you can see, I have four uh, switches, and powers all the switches, and from there on, that uh, start button is going to go to the uh, start. Then the forward reverse, and as you can see, this one goes to the jog button. As you can see, I've got another one in here. Jog does require 
a start uh, uh, start button being on to be able to work. So basically what we're going to do, we're going to close this one, the jog button, and start at the same time with the same button, and that will activate the jog. So do be aware, jog does require a run button. So yeah, and that's pretty much that. And then obviously we have a uh, potentiometer right in here, which is a Schneider electric potentiometer, and that's the ones going in here, com, speed, uh, AI, and 10 volts, and make sure your uh, dip switch in here stands on V. So let me put on cover on, and we'll test how that works. Here we are, so uh, as you can see, I have left my acceleration disconnection for roughly about one second for demonstration purposes. We're gonna stand in here and wait till the ramps up and ramps down. So here we go, so here's our drive going forward. Potentiometer, if you wanna go in the reverse, you'll flip that and it will go into uh, the reverse, and then you turn it off. As you can see, it goes back to forward. And then if you wanna uh, click the jog, and it will uh, go uh, in a jog mode. And if you want, if you want to go to the jog straight away from there, it will do that as well. So, uh, so that's that's when it comes down down. So let's see what happens when you put on. A, you already heard how that sounds on a four kilo um, uh, kilohertz of uh, carrier frequency. Let's put this one on. I give you more of a, a feel for it. What it sounds like on silent. And as you can see, that sound, that's here, sounds on silence. And that uses a 16 kilohertz, so it means the switches in the drive is working a lot, lot faster now. And for my load, actually, because uh, uh, I'm giving, well, I'm 23%, that would be fine. So, uh, so yeah, but again, my, my motor is well uh, undersized uh, for the drive itself. So that's pretty much how this drive works very easy to set up very really very easy to get yourself going hopefully is is giving you good understanding how to get yourself going how it all works as i said very very easy so yeah and that will do for this drive so uh, uh don't forget to like the video if you do like the video and then and, uh, and uh, we'll, we'll subscribe if you want to support the channel ask any questions and we'll answer them as soon as i can so uh yeah thank you very much for watching and i'll see you in the next video